On today's video, we're gonna be making a penobscot bow like you see right here. Now this thing looks really funky and you might be asking yourself, why in the world would I wanna make something like that other than it's cool? Well, the main reason is if you don't have access to high quality or big bow wood, you can make a hunting weight bow with very small or otherwise inferior bow wood using this method. I'll show you how. So for this build, we're going to be using service berry. This is actually a pretty good bow wood. This particular piece is just way too small to get a hunting weight bow. And so with this Penobscot design, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to get a bow up into the 45 to 50 pound range for big game hunting.
So this is green wood, meaning that if I tried to string this up right now and make a bow out of it, it's just gonna be super sluggish. It's gonna stay bent. It's not gonna have any cast. And so we need to dry this wood out and fire harden the belly a little bit. I first heard about these techniques on a video that Thad Beckham did. And then I went up and spent some time with Keith Shannon, which was also uh, integral in that video and uh, learned a bunch from those guys. So if you haven't checked out their videos, go over there to Thad's channel and check them out. They've got some good stuff. So I just left this bow hanging over this long fire for the remainder of the day and then overnight, trying to drive out as much moisture as I could. The string we're going to be using today is made out of deer backstrap sinew. This is actually a string that I made in a previous video. We're just going to repurpose it for this bow so I don't have to go through the whole process again. This area right here is super stiff. We'll take some wood out from right here.
So this stave just doesn't feel as crisp and snappy as I want. Um, when you push on it, it just doesn't snap back like I want it to. So I think the moisture content in here is still a little bit high. I'm gonna put it back on the fire for a couple hours and see if we can't dry it out, maybe fire harden the belly just a little bit. Got a little warm right there. So right here in this area, it got a little bit scorched, got a little bit too hot, but hopefully it's not scorched enough that it's gonna break it We'll have to see. Kind of let that get away from me a little bit. We'll let this cool down and then bend on a little bit and see what it does. All right, so what I should do now is just wait and do this tomorrow, let it soak up some humidity, but I am impatient. So we're gonna give it a try, hope for the best. definitely feels much better much springier So at this point, I've got a bow that's capable of taking small game like squirrels and grouse. It's fairly lightweight, but I wanna build something that packs enough punch for big game. And that's where the Penobscot design really shines. It allows you to use small diameter stuff or inferior bow wood to build powerful hunting weapons. It does this by laminating or mounting a smaller bow to the back of a larger one. And what this does is distributes the stresses in the bow, the tension and compression over two bows. But it also allows you to take the forces that are built into those bows and transfer it to a single arrow. We're gonna use the inner bark to lash these two bows together.
So for this string that goes from here to here, I'm just going to use a piece of leftover nettle cordage from a bowstring that I attempted to make that did not work very well. So it seems to be functioning right. Got tension here, it definitely increased the poundage. This side here, I think I'm gonna tighten up a little bit. So I'm gonna undo this. I think you could actually adjust the tiller on this bow by how, how you adjust these things. These arrows that I've got here are left over from another project that I did last year, the 24 hour bow build. I actually built this bow in 24 hours as well with force drying and fire hardening over this trench fire behind us. So that's probably 26 inches and it's getting on up 45 pounds or so. All right, we're gonna try to crank this thing on back a little bit. That's a full 28 inches and I'm, I don't have a scale here with me, but I'm gonna guess that the weight is a little over 50 pounds very nice very nice all right guys so overall thoughts impressions uh, assessment of this bow design i think in the right type of uh, circumstances where you don't have access to good bow woods this right here is a way to get a, a very capable hunting uh, weapon in your hands and I built this in 24 hours. Um, this is not a bow that's what most people think of as survival bows. Survival, most, most survival bows suck. They're green wood, they have very little cast, they're barely capable of taking small game. Uh, but something like this, if you can get within 10 yards or so of an animal and you've got decent arrows with good stone tips or something like this, this bow is perfectly capable of taking deer-sized game. One of the cool things about this design is that I could increase the weight of this bow if I wanted to simply by tightening the cordage between the two bows here and putting a little bit more strain on this top bow. Bam. Eating good tonight. Well, 
That's foam, but you know, you get the point. Not too bad for a little sapling. <laughs> 